Welcome to the Make Life Rich Movement. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I know. This is so fun. So just as a sidebar for everyone listening, uh, we live in the same town and uh, we are entrepreneurs that band together because there are a lot of us, but there aren't many of us in the service-based industry. So it's uh, been really nice to get to know her and uh, I've come to really love her businesses and that's why she's here today to talk about them. So uh, I would love to know where exactly your entrepreneurial journey started. So... It started a very long time ago, probably, I was still in high school at the time, actually. Uh, my best friend and I started uh, blogging and we had like our own little website. I, I don't even know if, I don't think it was actually like a website. It, w it did turn into a website at one point, but it started as a Tumblr blog. Okay. So we were, you know, in that Tumblr phase. And that's like before it was really even popular. We always like tell, talk about it now. We're like, man, like if we would have kept going, like that because it wasn't a thing really then yeah and we you know I was always like really tech savvy so I was like pretty quick to figure out the logistics of how all of that worked and then Instagram started getting more popular and it just well, I mean we were doing like product reviews travel blogs it was fun so mm -hmm. I really loved like the content creating like from the get-go and um I just kept going after that. And, you know, we went through college and everything kind of just fizzled out um, the, the blog and all that. Not our friendship. We're still going strong. Um, but, uh, yeah, and then from there, I just, I think that's where it, it really started. After college and high school, I ended up um, getting a job at um, Congress Hall as the head concierge, which is just kind of fast forwarding a little bit. I loved that. Um, and that's what inspired my concierge business because that was like a private service to the hotel guest. And as like I was getting more and more involved in that job, I would realize like more and more people, family, friends, friends of friends, friends of family, like everybody was asking me advice on what to do in town. And it just, I was like, man, like I could definitely like make some money off of this. Mm -hmm. um, and my job at Congress Hall started to get a little bit stressful and I could tell that the joy of that job was starting to kind of fade. And I'm glad that I was at least mature enough to realize that in that moment because I really, I really enjoyed that and I didn't want to not enjoy it. I didn't want it to ever become something I didn't like to do. Yeah. Um, so I did my, started my concierge business that took off. Um, I waited till after I left Congress Hall because I didn't, you know, I respect them. I still respect them. Um, but yeah, so that did really well. It took a while because it was really, I was using my connections. Um, and then I got pregnant and I couldn't, I had a baby and I started doing linen rentals and then I was like the business was growing but I was slowing down and that was hard and yes. I was you know like lugging these bags and bags of linens to local Airbnbs with my son in the back who was just a couple weeks old feeding him in the back of the car getting out dropping off carrying him and it was just looking back on that I'm proud of myself for getting through that but it's also what made me stop. And I feel like there was a lot of moments where I was like, man, like, should I have just like kept going? Um, but I, I, I didn't. And if I had kept going, I wouldn't have my business now, which is my, my planners, um, which was kind of, of all started during that time when I was trying to get organized when I was about to have a baby. I had like stacks and stacks of notebooks, papers everywhere. And I, needed to get organized. I was nesting, you know, so, mm -hmm. and I just realized, I was like, I just need something that's like not too big, not too small, that I can carry everywhere. I can take into meetings that's, you know, stylish. And that's like kind of where the design process all started. And, and now I have these great products that, you know, I'm still learning, but I, I love it. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. Okay. So I'm going to break down a bit of your past because I want to interject where I became aware of you. Okay. So uh, I'm much older than Kaskia, so we're 
we have mutual friends, but we are pretty distant. We didn't go to school together, like mm -hmm. not at all the same time frame. But uh, I do PR, so coming home, it was always exciting to like just see what was new and what was changing and who was kind of keeping up with you know the newer ways that business was being done and i had known about you from congress hall because so many people were just like singing your praises around town she's so organized she gives like the best tips she plans everything down to the minute and um i was like "Ooh, type a girl like that's so yeah. fun i have to meet her and then i remember when you went off on your own I have a, we have a ton of mutual friends that were at Congress Hall when you were there, but so many of them were, in fact, just so proud of you for doing that and making that decision and turning your skill set that you got to, like, really gnaw your teeth into at Congress Hall. Guys, if you're not aware of Congress Hall, it is the most beautiful resort in Cape May. Um, Cape May is the number one family resort in the world, so... We literally are where families come to go to the beach every year. And this hotel is a five-star dream. And to work there, you must be absolutely on your A-game. So you got like some of the best like experience possible to then segue that into a business. But for me, I think the thing that I love is that throughout your journey, you put your personal boundaries over a career path. And, you know, it, it's something that a lot of people really are hesitant to do. But for me, it looks as though, you know, as one would hope, putting these boundaries in place for you only led you down the right path to these things that were better suited for you. So in deciding that Congress Hall was just getting to be too busy and, and too much, you needed to separate from that before you lost your passion. Oh, my gosh, like. That's something that takes people 20 years to learn over like a very long, arduous life. So the fact that you got what that skill set almost innately into the beginning of your entrepreneurial career is super cool for me. I want to point that out for everyone because if you can harness putting your well-being before your business, it sounds counterintuitive because we want money, we want to be successful. But for me, you can only pour from a full cup and the more that you're draining and draining and draining and then your son comes into the equation you know you had a lot on your plate and it required you getting organized which literally led to you creating the product that you have and that you're selling now so yeah. I just love that journey it's so serendipitous it feels very much meant to be and these are like my favorite stories to hear because this is what everybody wants. This is why people start businesses for exactly like what you have gone through and are living right now. Yeah. I think there's a lot of fear too in that. I think like you hear all the time on social media, like it's always like a highlight reel and all that stuff. And like it really, it is. Um, but I feel like lately, I feel oh, maybe over the past like year or two, people have been more open about struggling and like the, all the, the trenches that you kind of, you experience like I'd be lying if I said that I didn't have a huge panic attack at Congress Hall one day that maybe was the reason why I left you know I think when you're when your physical and mental health start to really show up in a negative way that if you don't listen to that and you don't do something about that in a, in a responsible way and in, in a, a way that's you know taking care of yourself then it's, you're not going to, it's not going to lead you anywhere good, you know, like, and I think that was, and I still practice that till this day, like, I will just remove myself from a situation if I feel like my mental health is being compromised, or if I'm getting anxious, or like shaking, or like, it, it's physically visible in my body, and I can feel that, like, I will remove myself, and that's, I think, that took a lot of practice too. And it's still, it's something you just have to keep practicing. And so that's, I'm just, I think being mindful of that is, is really important. Absolutely. And I think having like the wherewithal to know and not to like play off these physical, um, uh, like plays of emotion that come out. Like we've kind of been taught my generation, definitely yours, I think was like the trickle down effect of that. But we were kind of taught to just like buck up. And in doing that, we shoved our needs down, which has yeah. led to a lot of pretty specific problems with entrepreneurs specifically, because mm -hmm. uh, it leads to burnout. And it leads to burnout because we were never given 
a proper like platform to build a routine off of that's both productive and like healthy. Right. Um, I would love to know your thoughts on being someone that loves to plan in, in your uh, concierge days, like planning was probably like the, like the center of your whole world. So in creating this planner, I know that you have so many different inserts depending on what the person is looking to plan or how they're looking to structure their day. But I would imagine that you made a lot of these for yourself. Where, where did these sheets come from? And like, do you have one that kind of helps people to keep their mental health and their well being in check while still running their business? Yeah, absolutely. That I think, so it's funny because just backtracking a little, even just to the other day, I've, I have these conversations with people and they're just like, like, what are you doing? Like, what, what are you doing now? Like, what do you do? I'm so confused. Like, where are you still concierging? Are you, I see these books, like, what are these books? And I'm just like, Oh, they're my, this is my new business. So like, I've always been, um, just tr- always doing something new, but like, yeah, sure. I have no shame in that. Like I love, like I thrive off of that. I love the, the, like I said before, just being creative, um, huge fan of rebranding, um, especially in life and business. Like, I think it's great. Like if you're going to rebrand yourself, awesome. Why wouldn't you want to become like the 2.0 version of yourself? There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think there's people are so afraid. Okay. Like, well, what if I like start doing this? Like, what are people going to think? And it always comes down to like, what are other people going to think? What are people going to say? Because like everybody gossips, you know, everybody, yeah. everybody gossips. So like, you know, that there's, that's an inevitable people are going to talk about you, but it just removing that, like, well, but like let them, that just, that's mm-hmm. kind of where I was at. I was like, whatever, like, I'm just going to create this because I need it. And I needed to have something that I could separate all these things at the time, mo- becoming a mom, um, slowly closing the concierge business, um, starting something new. Um, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. So having a space where I could keep all that together because my mind is always like all over the place. That was important. I needed like a central hub almost. And I also had all these um, planners, agendas and notebooks that like were dated. So it was important for me to have something that had no dates, especially because I am also the type that will put something down and not pick it up again for a few months. You know, it's just, yeah. Yeah. that was important. I was like, I just, I'm wasting money on these planners, on these notebooks that I can only use one time. And if I don't use them within the time frame that they were made for, I'm, I'm at a loss. So with my planners, you know, you can, it's a six ring that size of the pages is a five, which is a European size. It's becoming more like international now, but, um, it's like eight inches high by like five and some change inches wide. So they're, not huge, but they're not too small. So I chose that. Um, and I started making the inserts that I needed, uh, calendars, um, content creation pages that were just like, I worked in buckets with my content creation. So like, I just drew up on paper cause I'm huge pen and paper. Like what I saw myself doing, how I mapped out my content. And then I just created a template in the same format so that I could just print pages and keep them with me and use them when I needed them. Note pages, uh, love writing, brainstorming, all of that. And eventually like I realized, okay, like I love creating these pages. And so once my business kind of kicked off, I started doing a lot of custom interior pages. Um, I do have different, uh, inserts for different topics and, um, businesses, real estate. I do have a wellness, uh, which I really feel like the, the wellness is, has a lot to do around meal planning and fitness, but it's also the same thing. Like it has like a four week, 12 week workout plan that you fill in, whether that's walking, great, working out, lifting, whatever it is great. But like, it is totally customizable to you as an individual, which is important because I feel like nowadays we're all just kind of put into these buckets with other people and like that, the individualism is not emphasized as much anymore, you know, and and you see that a lot on social media, everybody's saying the same thing. I was listening to a podcast the other day 
and somebody made a comment about how, you know, people will put a happy birthday post out to somebody. It's like, you're just a great human. Like, you're a great human being, which is fine. That's great. But everybody's saying that. What happened to, like, just saying, like, you're a great person, you know? And But it's, like, the tiny little repetitive words that we are just unconsciously putting ourselves all in the same exact bucket. So to me, fully customizable was my biggest, my biggest thing. I, I really needed this to be something that was high quality, looked good, kind of gave you some businesswoman confidence, whatever you want to call it, when you're taking it out, walking around, going to meetings, and just being able to put it down for a little while and pick it back up when you're ready. So... Yeah, and then and making people that have tons of doctor's appointments or need to track their mental health or want a good quote or something like being able to reach out to me so that I can make that for them to exactly what they need, like that's been huge. And it's something that people use every single day yeah. or not, but like either way is fine, you know. I love that a lot. And I think uh, for a few different reasons, I think it's a really smart business model. If you have the time for it to be able to create these custom sheets, that's awesome. Not only that, you then have created a new sheet that someone else out there may be interested in. And it's only mm -hmm. like increasing your product suite. And I think it's really cool that you're giving people that are not tech friendly, don't want to set up a relationship with a manufacturer and a printer to be able to get these sheets made themselves they're able to go right to you and cut out the middleman. And I think that's super cool. Um, I also love that you literally sky's the limit. I mean, your wedding planner, I think that was the first one I saw you put out that was kind of like something different to offer to people. And now you have um, Spanish versions of, of all of yeah. your templates. So I think it's just really exciting to me that you are giving such customizable options that are actually things you enjoy doing and creating so you're not going to burn out over that but mm -hmm. it is a defining factor for me um, with a planner company I stock planners I'm like so psycho obsessed with planners like you I have many dated ones that are like in a graveyard over on my shelf over there like I don't want to throw them away but <laughs> now I just like write weird aimless notes in them just to use the paper but I, I do love the fact that you kind of have this as your your branding, like your branding is creating someone's custom journey for their day. Like that's a really cool service. And I think it's an even cooler product. Guys, we'll, we'll include a video and all the good stuff for you to see. There'll be a link in the show notes for you to go purchase this planner. It's available now on Amazon, although the qualities are running limited on the black on the black one yeah okay i saw that this morning on stories yes. <laughs> i am a stalker guys okay um so we'll leave all the links in the show notes but it's an elegant yet modern planner it's beautiful it is something you could carry into a meeting with your ipad underneath um you showed the other night that your kindle fits in it that's amazing so this is like the perfect thing to tuck in your purse for a flight and shove your kindle in it and just have all your stuff right there um it's, it looks like it would fit in a baby bag without taking up too much room. Like it's just yes. very smart. It's very well thought out. Could you um, explain a bit about like what the manufacturing process was like in getting the actual leather planner created? Yeah. Yeah. So that came with a lot of oopsies, a lot <laughs> of oopsies over the course of like, I didn't uh, get my, so I started creating them. I was pregnant in 2020. So I started creating them in 2020, started the design process. Didn't get them until my son um, was almost a year old. So it took a little over a year from start to finish um, designing and getting samples. Um, I went on, I don't know if it's frowned upon or not, you know, I always hear different things, but about Alibaba.com. No, it's Alibaba for life. Okay. Every so, single I person know. I interview uses Alibaba, so feel no shame. Okay. Every single but one. I, I don't feel shame anyway, but <laughs> <laughs> that's where I found my manufacturer. So I think it kind of is like a Facebook page of manufacturers, people sharing their products, the, the you know, so that was where I started doing a lot of research. And there were a lot of planners already on there. Those are the ones that you see on Amazon. I see huge planning companies, 
planner companies, um, like the big names, Erin Condren. And I mean, I love all of their stuff. I use all of their stuff. Um, but those are the planners that you see on Alibaba. So to me, I was like, like even now, like I'm looking at some of the quality of these products. Like I know what it costs to make one of these. And I think that I was just kept seeing the same thing. Everybody brands it differently, but I kept seeing the same type of planner. I was like, I don't want that. You know, I wanted to make something that was that both men and women could use, um, not just girly and bright colors. I only have two colors. I only have brown and I only have black. I don't really plan on having more than that. Um, but, you know, I won't put it off the table, but I like these two. I feel like it's just a good, a good balance. Um, so I, I reached out to a bunch of manufacturers. I had them send me pictures of their products. Didn't like anything. So I was like, I'm just going to start asking them if they can design them there. They have the factory, they have the materials. So I did. I asked a couple different people what it would cost to create one from scratch. Um, and I landed on this woman. Um, her name is Lily. So she uh, helped me. I was talking to Lily every single day. Mind you, my son was born and they are in Asia. So the timeline was terrible. But because my son was like still in that new, you know, like waking up every two, three hours, it worked out for me. Oh my God. Because I did. was up. I was up at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., feeding him and talking to my manufacturer. So I learned a lot about measurements, how they do things over there. I was, you know, I had my tape measure out in the middle of the night just trying to figure out what size I wanted to go with. Like everything is. Full customized. I literally customize every inch of this planner besides the six ring thing in the middle. So all the pockets, all the zippers. And she worked with me, I mean, tirelessly. And she sent me samples. There was the time where I got a sample in the mail, which took two weeks to come. And I forgot to design the inside. Like mm -hmm. I didn't tell her, like, you need to be so specific. I didn't say that what I wanted exactly on the inside, I kind of just was excited and I forgot. So two weeks went by, I got a planner that literally had nothing on the inside. So it was a lot of, you know, her sending me samples of material. Um, it was a big thing for me. I wanted to be vegan leather, but I wanted it to feel real. So if I liked the color and didn't like the feel, I wouldn't use it. I just didn't want to settle on anything in this company. So, um, yeah, so it took a long time to get the planner exactly right, but I remember this is actually the first one. This was my sample, my like final sample, and I use it. It's been, I guess, two two years two years now, um, over two years since I got it, and it still looks brand new. So I'm at least proving now to myself and to other people that this quality, even though it's vegan leather, is like still really strong, really durable and doing it with where, you know, my toddler will carry it around, throw it around, whatever. It's fine. Like it's, it's doing well. So I'm really proud of it. And when people tell me that, you know, they love theirs and I just got a text this morning from a good friend and she's just like, she bought, people are buying them for their friends, their family. And just like when they tell me how much that they love it and how they use it every day and how they want to expand and use it in different ways. Like I literally will tear up because it's yeah. when you put that kind of work into something and then people are actually like genuinely in love with it just almost as much as you are like that is just like that's great yeah <laughs> it's, yeah yeah it's uh it's definitely validation um i think it's like what all entrepreneurs chase in reality right like we all start probably with the aim of helping somebody with something and then for someone to pick up what you're putting down and be like, yep, I'm obsessed with you. It's yeah. like a surreal feeling. So I love that that's happening for you. And so soon in your journey, I feel like um, knowing you and your creative process and your content skills and your organizational skills, I can only imagine how far you're going to take this company and the ways in which this is going to kind of like divert out and just expose more of your skill set because again you are so young and you are so determined and uh I think it's just really important that 
people hear that because it's important to know that like you can be under 30, have a family, be grinding it out, be working on something that takes, you know, many years to see the results of like the fruits of that labor, but it is all worth it. And it is literally just consistency and sticking to the grind. And you are such an example of that. I think it's, um, also really commendable that you did it while raising a newborn being pregnant. Like I have no children, but I, you know, my sisters recently had two children and the change of life and what you're expected to do things you've never done before in your life. You're expected to be perfect at immediately. And I think it's, um, just super incredible that you got all of this done while also crushing being a new mom. Um, Thanks. it's awesome. It's so cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's rewarding and I didn't realize that when I was in it, you know, it was really me telling myself because there was a lot of tears. There was a lot of, I mean, just the mom part alone, like raising a newborn, I was crying almost every night, the postpartum blues, like you name it. And then I had friends that were going through the same thing. And I think surrounding yourself with people that are going through those things with you in, in life are going to help you get to a point where, you know, okay, like maybe I can do this. Like they're just people that'll encourage you to keep going. And I just remember thinking like over and over and over again, like don't give up too fast. Like don't give up too fast because I know that almost everybody, like I would say not almost everybody, but the majority of people do, they give up way too fast. And I feel like this is something that I really, I fought through a lot of that. Like don't give up. Like all, all the time, like I thought about it all the time. I thought about, I just can't do this. Even after I had them in my hands, I ordered the bulk inventory and I was afraid to even just launch them. And I was like, I just, this is going to fail. Like, I can't do this. You know, like, what am I doing? I probably look like an idiot. Like, just the negative self-talk was so prominent. And I think just fighting through that and like leaning on the right people um, was really, it's, it's why that they're, it's why they're doing well. And like after that first launch and selling out pretty quickly, um, it was, that's what I needed. You know, like I needed that. I needed, I was like, finally, you know, like, okay, like this might actually be a really good thing. And that gave me a little bit of confidence. I needed to keep going to make another color. And I, like, but just fighting through that, like all those, that negative self-talk, the baby, the postpartum baby blues, like, it is it's possible but it's hard and like i think just knowing that okay like this is this is going to be hard like it's not all it doesn't just keep going up it's not all positive all the time like i think you know there's a lot of reward in in pain and it's important to act with humility and to like be okay with making mistakes and sharing those mistakes so that you can help somebody else not make them and i think that's a huge part of my character as a person too. Like I really, I I'm, feel like I'm known as to be like an oversharer. Like I, I share a lot and I'm like not afraid to just like tell you what I'm going through, tell you like how things are, whether it's my personal life, my marriage, my kid, my business. Like I'm going, I'm an open book. Like I will tell you whether you want to hear it or not. <laughs> and I think it's a huge trust factor for people too. You know, people trust me because of that, because I, they know that I'm open. They know that I'll tell them if something's good or not good. If something, if I'm doing something that maybe I'm not proud of, I'm very quick to be like, Hey, like that wasn't cool. Like I'm going to, you know, be better for me, for you, for whoever. I think just constantly growing and, and learning. And I don't know. I don't even know what the question was. There a question? I don't know. <laughs> I just started word vomiting. No, we're, we're just, we're just chatting now, but I love, I want to pick apart some things you said, because for me, they're one huge indicators of where you're at in your personal growth. And two, they're like hand in hand with being successful in business without personal growth. Your business can only go so far before you crumble or it crumbles. And I think for me, the biggest thing that you said was, you know, the negative self-talk and being able to lean on others. And the thing that I want to add, uh, that I myself at 38 am still working on and have made pretty big strides in the last few months after a book I read, but 
Uh, it all comes down to reparenting the little tiny person inside of you that feels like they're not good enough for whatever reason it is. And we're all going to have different reasons. But in those moments of me being like, oh, I, I fucking suck. Like this blows. Mm -hmm. I just forget it. I like atom bomb it all. Those moments are the times where you have to stop. Turn inside yourself and say, we are safe. Everything is figure outable. We're in charge now and we can do this. Like we got this. I got this little me. You got this. Like we are okay. And then pick up your stuff and keep going forward. And that sounds like the skill set that you have cultivated for yourself to be able to just keep working through the difficult points. And yeah. I think the thing that people that have not worked for themselves, but maybe are thinking about it, don't know yet is that you get to pick your heart. You can work hard for someone else and see nothing but a paycheck in exchange for your time and hard work. That means nothing to who you're working for, or you can work hard for yourself. And it's not like uh, we're reaching a plateau, right? Where everything then gets easy. Like you work through the changes of becoming a mother and all the things that come with that while learning manufacturing, while, okay, well, you've figured out your planner and you've got everything down to a T, but there's still going to be trials and tribulations. You may have sourcing issues in the future. There may be, you know, just things that are out of our control and you will have to apply that skill to those things in the future. So can you talk a little bit about what it has been like for you to use your business as a tool for your personal growth? Because it sounds like that's kind of how you've operated with specifically the planner. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree to all of the above. Um, therapy <laughs> has been very helpful. I've been in therapy for a long time. Um, just, I think I've, I've always been, I, I, I try not to like victimize myself too much now, but I, I feel like growing up and, and I've gone through a lot, um, personally, um, from since I was a little kid. So I feel like going through working, learning about myself and just being, being able to be honest with myself, um, first before I even start thinking about what I want to do, um, in my business life, I think it's really important. I think figuring out who you are first, um, is a must because I think if you don't, you won't really know, you won't have a sense of direction. Um, if you want to start a business, if you, if you feel like people feel that they, they know that they, they have like an entrepreneurial spirit and they're just like, you know, I don't know what to do. Like, what do I do? But they know it's there, but I think they just need to look a little bit deeper, put the entrepreneurial stuff aside and think, talk to themselves a little bit more and then see, you know, start asking themselves questions and, that'll take them where they need to go. Because I think there are a lot of people that know that there's something inside of them that they, you know, they, whether it's they don't want to work for somebody else or whether it's that they feel that they could be something bigger. I think that's when you need to, instead of trying to launch yourself forward, you need to really like kind of hone in on, on who you are in that moment as a person. And I think working with people, professionals, therapists, um, doctors, whoever, with getting their guidance, um, reading books, um, just figuring out what way works for you when it comes to like self discovery. So I did a lot of different things. I, I, I would read books. I would listen to podcasts on um, just to like, I would search kind of how I'm feeling. Like if I was feeling depressed, um, or lost, I would, sometimes I would just search that into like my Spotify and type the word podcast after it and see what titles came up that maybe resonated with me. And then I would kind of just work from there. And then I'd learn something new and I'd take that, put it towards the next thing. If I was good for a few weeks and then I kind of felt that I was just going downhill again, I would just start to, to self-educate. And I think that that's, that's really helpful. And I think I, I use that in my business because I knew that I could, I could do that for myself. Like, why couldn't I do that in business too? You know, just because I have no background in manufacturing or sales doesn't mean that I can't learn about it. So that's what I did. And I, I love learning. And I think that more people should want to learn. There's so many free courses, um, 
college courses and just ebooks and everything and people just don't consume it you know i mean they do but like i feel like not as frequently and it can it can be overwhelming so you definitely want to be careful about how much you're consuming um especially with social media there's just so much information it can make you go crazy um, but if you're really specific if you're really specific on what you want to learn or what you want to try and work better on and within yourself like you can find that information and then you can learn those skills of learning a new skill for yourself and put it into your business whatever that is going to be so i think that all comes together like hand in hand just that willingness to just keep learning yeah and i love the fact that in turn from that learning you're empowering yourself which can for some help to remove the fear and the anxiety because you're strengthening your belief in yourself and you're kind of just like fortifying the fact that you have you, like you've got your back. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the biggest lessons that brand new entrepreneurs learn pretty immediately is that no one is coming to save you. Yeah. No one's coming to fix your business unless you pay them. No one is coming to put money into your hand. Nothing is earned and it is a hard reality but the benefit of learning that lesson is that you eventually even out and you level up and you get better and better and better. And in that you free yourself because you eventually realize that all of this work was just making you a more efficient, better version of yourself mm -hmm. that is going to allow you to live a full and happy life. Yeah. People that sometimes trade a paycheck for comfort not everyone needs to become an entrepreneur. I'm not saying that, but mm -hmm. for those of you that are exchanging your time for a paycheck for comfort, and you know that you are, but you know that there's something deeper inside of you that kind of wants to get out. I do love Kaskia's recommendation of just learning a little bit more about yourself first. Um, it's really important. And even someone like me, I've, I've been, running or freelancing a, a business of some sort since 2008 and literally just in the last year and a half I unlocked what feels like the lesson that I needed to learn to actually be successful in my business and the last month and a half has been a complete change versus the last 14 years so if it's something you can figure out early on in the game kudos to you my young people do it um, but you just have to start and you have to start scared. There's no other way to start. If you're not scared, you don't have a big enough goal in front of you. It has to terrify you. And then getting through that fear and the pain and suffering that can come with working through that, you're earning the reward. And I feel like that is literally where you are right now in your journey of entrepreneurship. And it's something that should be celebrated because you know it's like, an easy example is podcasts. A lot of people start a podcast, but they never get past episode three. You're like on your fifth season, you know, like you're like trudging through. You've got hundreds of episodes. Yeah, but that's that's true, and it's something that I want. I'm I'm okay. I'm gonna pick that back up, and yeah. I think that's huge. You have to be okay with like pressing pause on things. There's gonna be other things that are gonna be calling you at that point. Like I feel like that's and that's when people give up completely because they are afraid to yeah. press pause. And revisit something in fear of what other people are going to think of it, about that. Yeah. And I think you're so right. And I think also another fear is people are, you always hear, you know, like, it takes money to make money. And like, it doesn't. I, it, it doesn't. You can start with zero dollars. Uh, and in my case, you can start with negative $243. Yeah. So, and that's. Like, as you go, you figure things out. You will find a way to make what you need work. Like, if you really want it that bad, you will find a way to make it work. And then eventually you will start making money. But I feel like that's the problem. People are just like, I want to make money, and but I don't have money. So how am I going to make money if I don't have money? And I think then that, that's a problem right there. They're only thinking about making money. They're not thinking about the impact that they want to make. They're not thinking about the, the product or the service that they want to to create or offer. They're just thinking about the money and that's just like the wrong way to go. 100%. And I would love, 
I would love to talk about how you have had to learn literally everything regarding this planning this planner company from scratch including your most recent battle which has been Amazon because I know more people than I can count on five sets of hands that have walked away from making their business a reality because of having to deal with Amazon and I personally have dealt with Amazon so I know what you went through and I would love for you just to discuss Give a general overview of what the process is for those that aren't aware, but I want you to talk about what it was like for you to go through that personally. Like what sure. came out of this being now a listed product on Amazon? Sure. So um, I am um, a member of this group called The Product Boss. Um, uh, Jacqueline and Mina, they run, these two women run this group. And I was, I started as just a frequent listener of their podcast because I was getting into a product-based business, so I would search product-based podcasts. And I found them, loved the way that they, they talked. It was just very conversational and informative. And it was the little, it was the beginning stages, those little pieces that you needed like to consider, stuff that I probably wouldn't have thought about on my own without failing a bunch of times. Um, so it was nice, and it's free information. Like this is free. They just are so passionate about what they do, so they're giving this information away for free. Um, so I eventually became a member of their group and they, uh, have like the Facebook pages and all that. So I would like go through and see what people were talking about. And a couple people were like, Hey, I was reading this module in the, in the course and it was about, uh, Amazon. So I think I'm going to add my product on Amazon. Like, has anybody done this before? And like, just the comments were crazy. Like, yeah, not worth it. Like, yeah, too, too hard. Or like, yeah. Um, only made it halfway through the module or whatever. So I was like, Amazon. So that's kind of where the thought came. I was like, I have these planners. Like, I don't necessarily have to put any pages in them. There are people out there just as planner obsessed as me that want to buy their pages from somewhere else, that want to make their pages themselves. They have their way. So I can probably, like, sell these on Amazon, just the binder part. So that's what I did. Um... I will say one of the biggest lessons that I learned was to, when you're originally um, getting ready to price your product, I would like times it maybe by three or so, two or three, um, if you think that maybe wholesaling is something that you're going to want to do. Because if you don't price your product right, you're not going to be able to, to grow it in the way that it maybe it could, that it could scale. So that's what I did from, from the beginning because with Amazon, um, if you do uh, FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon, which is what I'm doing, I ship them my inventory, they sell it, they deal with the customer communications, they package it up, they ship it, um, but for a percentage of my sales. If my product wasn't priced appropriately, I would probably be making no money from that. Or so, so little for, for the work that was put into it. So I think that's a really big thing that people should research, consider um, before they launch a product. Like really think about that. Um, yeah. Then, you know, obviously you need to make sure that legally your business is intact with, you know, your LLC or whatever, however it is that you're going to be uh, forming your business. Make sure you have all of your documents because they want everything and anything that you have to prove your business, you need to get accepted to sell on Amazon. That can be like a lengthy um, process, just waiting. That's what I was just waiting, like forever it felt like, but it was maybe three weeks or so. Um, but that was that was tough. You know, you're just kind of sitting there hoping that this works out. Um, but in that time, like learn, like keep reading stuff, you know, ask questions to people that are on there. And then of course the listing process takes another forever amount of time. So it's very detailed. And I think just knowing your product, having use AI to help generate descriptions or look at what's, what's selling, how people are describing their um, products on Amazon, like what, what kind of keywords that they're using. Um, that's really helpful. Make sure that the brand name's in there. Um, you up with photos like you're not allowed to really which I don't know how true this is because I keep seeing people on Amazon with photos that 
have that are like flat lay type pictures that look really good. But when you upload your pictures, at least in my case, it's like needs to have a white background, this and that. So I'm just so confused with that. So I'm learning, I'm probably gonna look into that more today because I'm like, how come they get to have this like pretty little flat lay yeah. picture and I can't? So they're killing there's, the vibe, Amazon. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's something that I'm learning. Um, I'm sure there's loopholes and I don't care what kind of uh, TikTok black hole I'm gonna have to dig myself into to figure out <laughs> with the, the loophole here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure it out. Um, but yeah, like every little part from applying to listing to actually shipping the inventory, waiting for its arrival safely to their warehouse, it's all a very lengthy process. I think patience is huge. You need to be patient um, with, with everything. You yeah, need to be patient with the, the companies you work with. You need to be patient with yourself. So yeah. that's, that's my advice with Amazon. But it's, it's so far, it's worth it. So yeah. And you're almost sold out, so that's yeah. fire. It's, it's working. It's doing what it should. Yeah. 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 I would love for you to go through uh, what it would be like for someone to message you to create their own inserts. Like, what's your process? Um, are they able to create a whole year's worth? Are they just doing individual pages? Like, how do you like to work with that, and what could they do with you? Sure. Yeah. Um, very casual. Uh, usually just people sign into my DMs and, and ask the same process. I'm like, well, what do you need? You know, like, what do you do? How do you plan every day? Do you plan, like, do you put everything for the week on one page? Um, so I start with pretty basic questions like that. Um, and then depending on what their job is, you know, some, uh, for example, uh, photographers, they always want the, the next year because they book so far in advance for weddings or for photo shoots. Um, so, I'll, for them, they'll get like maybe a year that somebody else doesn't even need yet. Um, for people that maybe have health issues, that have a lot of doctor's appointments, you know, they need they need to have enough spaces for their doctor's appointments, time and place, um, mental health uh, affirmations, like whatever it may be. Like, I never use the um, the little water cup things that are in a lot of planners nowadays, like your water intake. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I never used that, but I yeah. did have people request that. So I'm like, okay, yeah. so I guess there is a reason why people, are. just because I didn't use it doesn't mean somebody else isn't using it, which is yeah. also something to remind yourself, you know. Um, important, that's important. Yeah. So, um, and then we, we see how many that, that they need. Um, and then some, I, I usually recommend that people try it for at least three months before they get more. But if they do decide that they want to change something or that it's working, they can order more or we can go back and I always save all of the files so that I can go back and change it for them, um, which is really cool. They're like, hey, like this is this has been great, but could I add this line for for, you know, whatever. Um, so that's really fun because it's working and then they're they're getting better in, in whatever area that they're in. Um, you know, so that's really satisfying, even though that they might not even realize that what they're saying to me is like really uplifting. Um, but yeah, like people in business, meeting notes, um, it's just project pages, finance. You know, my, my budget planner has helped me because my business is bootstrapped. I have no investors. I have been using every dime of my personal savings um, and income. And I think when you're doing that, you need, you need some type of structure. So yeah. I, I, I think I actually might still be giving them away for free on my website. I don't know. I yeah, just, I downloaded it. I love it. You did? Oh, yay. <laughs> yeah, I just started, I switched over to spot, uh, Shopify. So I'm still tweaking my website and stuff because I always, am, I don't know. I'm just, I just like to change stuff all the time. Yeah. But um, always yeah. upgrade. So I like pretty much like there's nothing that isn't. There's nothing that's not on the table when it comes to customizing something for an individual person. Um, I and I like that. that. And people are just super excited. They're like, oh, like people have like really unique jobs nowadays. Yes. Like really unique jobs. And so yes. I also get to see what they're doing on a daily basis, which is cool. Yeah. So sure. yeah, whatever people and stay at home moms is something that I'm trying to figure out like next. Um, 
people are homeschooling a lot now too. I do have like a teacher insert, but I think there's a way to kind of like round that out so that it works for homeschooling as well. Um, so yeah, there's just, and I'm not rushing anything, you know, as people need things, they'll ask. And I think listening to your customer base is really important. Yes. Organic growth is, is the best growth and to just have it be them literally begging you to make it for them is like the coolest problem to have. So yeah. Yeah. (laughs) What is the turnaround time for the custom sheets? Um, depending on my schedule, it could be a day, it could be three days, but it's never, yeah, it's literally never exceeded a week, you know, and depending where I'm shipping it to, same thing for the planners. I usually have them out in two or three days. Super cool. Which is also nice. A lot of them are like, oh yeah, we'll have it to you in the next month or so. By then you don't even need the first month that they put in there, you know? (laughs) You're like, hey. Yeah. It took forever. Yeah. So. I would love to know what your goals are for the future with this particular product and this company? So I think my biggest goal is to have more sales that work in the way of like kind of how Amazon is doing it where it's a lot less fulfillment on my end. Um, I think time is, you know, really important to me. And now that I have a, a son that's growing like way too fast uh, that's become my focus like I think spending more time with him is kind of where I want it to to be but I also still like to dabble in my creativity and so being able to do the custom orders but also while selling things um, whether it's to stores or Amazon um, fair which is just another like small business wholesaling website that's kind of where I want to be. So like if I can kind of get to a point where my calendars are kind of prepped and ready to go and that I can put some planners with the calendars and with certain inserts or bundles, things like that, that's where I'd like to be so that I could just ship them and go like whether it's on my end or in a, you know, another company's handling the fulfillment. But I think for me, it's just time is that the most valuable currency and I, I just want more of that and I want more freedom and I'm getting there and it's hard, but I'm getting there. Yeah. I love that. And that is absolutely, I think a sign of the success of your business thus far that you've reached a place to where you're ready to start automating things and making things more systematic so that you can truly live like the life that you started a business for, you know, the, the freedom. Um, so my last question for every guest is always, what makes your life rich? Ooh, um, my son, my son, spending time with my son walking. I love walking. I like to, for somebody who's very connected, I'm very, man, I guess I'm addicted to social media. I don't know. I don't like saying it, but maybe this will help move the needle for me in that where I'm just like, I'm not going to scroll. I love not being connected to my phone. Um, leaving my phone at home or I have like the worst watch tan line. So like when I take off my watch, that's a good sign. Like I'm, I'm disconnecting. If you see a bright white ring around my wrist, it's because I'm disconnecting. Um, so yeah, I think that's definitely just spending quality time with my son and just being disconnected, just being really present. I love that. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Cassia, for coming on and just sharing your journey and your business. Mm -hmm. Um, where can everyone find you? I'm going to put all the links in the show notes, but where can they find you? Your website, Instagram, are you on Pinterest? I am on Pinterest, yes. Uh, Kaskia Rosas on Pinterest, uh, at Kaskia, C-A-S-K-I-A on Instagram. Um, Facebook is CR Planner, not, no, yeah, CR Planner, not Planners, because CR Planners was taken, and it's a planning company. Woo, yeah. So just CR Planner on Facebook. Um, that's pretty, my website, KaskiaRosas.com. Um, but, uh, yeah, those are pretty much TikTok. I do have TikTok. I'm working on that. Okay. Still figuring that out, but yeah, I'm pretty much everywhere. Okay, okay cool. We'll put all the links in and, yeah. uh, could we give the audience access to your budget 
template? Could they sign up for that? Could we include yes. that link too? Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Absolutely. Perfect. You're going to love it guys. It's, it's simple, but it does it. It does the trick. You don't it's pretty. always need a complicated <laughs> sheet. This one makes unpleasant things very pleasant. So download it. Um, thank you so much for coming on. It was such a pleasure Thanks, and you. I hope to see you soon. Thank you. I appreciate this.